The record fall off for Doctor Strange's mom has uh, been, well, <laughs> catastrophic. Uh, at least if you're a movie studio looking to have a film perform like a traditional superhero film has performed over the last decade. When it comes to this particular film, though, when you have that large of a fall off and an 80% potential fall off and it ultimately for the weekend a 60 plus percent fall off that hurts first of all it it shows everybody that word of mouth is a real problem but there's something else at work here and we'll talk about it here in today's video let's talk a little bit about the fall of Doctor Strange here we go As you can tell, I'm not 100%. I know it's quite possible that I've never been 100%, but hey, I got a little bit of a epizootis. I got a little sick. And uh, you know what? I'm not going to let it hold me down. I'm still going to produce some content. So we want to focus on, you know, something that had, well, not the best second week in Doctor Strange. With that being said, let's take a real quick look at the numbers, which gathers the uh, estimated or projected estimates for the weekend and kind of gives us a breakdown of where this film falls. And as you can see here, as we scroll down through the chart, the uh, box office summary or what the projection uh uh, you know, band would be is right here in this top chart. It shows us that if this film is falling well below what its projected expectations would be based on its initial earnings. Again, hot start to begin with, not exactly the best performance going into the second weekend. So the argument could be made and has been made by a lot of other creators here on the platform that everybody that saw this film or everybody that wanted to see this film has seen it they were pretty much done. It's not something that's worth going back for repeat views. A lot of people have complained about this. And look, we're going to get into an article from Deadline that kind of highlights the situation. I know it's surprising. Deadline's kind of a trade mag rag that, you know, is 100% on the side and in the complete pocket of Hollywood. And it's a shiltastic writer that actually brings some of these arguments into the discussion. But we'll continue from there. As you can see, the all-time domestic box office right now, this thing ranks at 135 with a $247,598,000 number. Of course, that number is going to wiggle one way or another when all these numbers actually come in on Monday or Tuesday. But this is roughly what we're looking at. And as you can see, the box office performance overall fell off 67%. That's, you know, weekend over weekend. That's actually not great. That's like terrible. We're starting to see these numbers coming out of these Marvel films um, on these second weekends. Once the word of mouth gets out, just kind of, uh, well, expose how disinterested the audience is becoming in, 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 in these films. You have a lot of stands out there and that's great. Stands, you know, they, they support brand. But at the same time, a lot of people are walking away from this because it doesn't feel reminiscent of anything that they enjoyed before. And boy, are they not wrong. As you can see, you know, on May 5th, this thing made $36 million. You had May 6th at $90 million. You had May 7th at $57 million. So on that opening weekend, it did pretty well. And going through the 8th, you had $187.420 million. You already start to see a slide very early on, starting on May 7th, and that just continues to fall off and fall off and fall off until you get to the following weekend, May 13, 14, 15, where you have an 82% fall off, never before heard of. Not least with one of these big films like this, that's substantial. It didn't really earn all that much money in the theaters. The Saturday after that fall off was a minus 54% and 55% fall off on the Sunday. That is not fantastic. And it's not something that you would think would come out of what would be a blockbuster Marvel film. But that's, again, the you know beside the point. When we move on to the story from Deadline, and like I said, this is from Anthony Del Alessandro, who is, uh, well, he's shiltastic for you know pretty much everything. Uh, he basically reports accurately on what's happened with a 67% downward fall on, uh, well, 
<laughs> a, uh, a second weekend of the Doctor Strange uh, run. Doctor Strange 2 Mom. Doctor Strange Mom. That's probably right, Doctor Strange Mom, because this focuses on Wanda more than it does Doctor Strange, which we'll get to. And here's the interesting part. It's written in a very shiltastic way. While that drop is akin to the second weekend declines of recent MCU titles, the uber successful Spider-Man No Way Home had a 67.5% fall off. Black Widow had a 67.8% fall off. Know that all these percentile plummets are not equal. Doctor Strange 2 ranks among the MCU's second biggest weekend box office drops, uh, which includes Black Widow, No Way Home, and 2003's Hulk, which fell 70%, at least according to the numbers here uh, in Deadline. Now, Doctor Strange 2's second weekend decline simply rests on bad word of mouth. The sequel receiving a back-to-back -back meh grade from CinemaScore for an MCU movie. B- minus for The Eternals. I can't imagine it was really a B-, minus, but whatever. And of course, you know, that goes all the way back to November. All of this is essentially a splash of cold water in Marvel's face as they go crazy exploiting IP between uh, features and streaming Disney Plus series. Well, let me tell you, for a lot of people, this is indistinguishable from a Disney Plus show, which means it they've lowered the bar substantially in the film quality. Well, and in storytelling quality across the board. I mean, let's just face it. You can't stuff that much political agenda craptasticness into a film where, you know, there can't be male heroes, uh, you know, without, you know, essentially shrugging off anything Thing that could be interesting in a story. You can tell interesting female-driven stories, they just don't seem to know how to do it. But again, in Doctor Strange 2, you would think that movie's named after him. It's his sequel, but he's merely a bit player in his own film, which is going to be essentially Thor Love and Thunder and anything else that Victoria Alonso and her ilk get their hands on. But hey, I'm not the only person telling you that, so I'll continue on. So apparently, Anthony D. Alessandro actually got a call from his uh, cousin, apparently. And that cousin is an MCU fan, a Stan, whatever you want to call it. And essentially um, called out this film. In fact, he says, I'm going to tell, this is his cousin, by the way, I'm going to tell everyone I know to avoid Doctor Strange 2. When asked why, I mean, it's not the best, but it's not the worst. Well, Vinny unloaded completely. Quote, it's a two hour season finale to WandaVision. No kidding. Starts, sounds kind of like us, right? And this is supposedly a normie. I expected more than Sam from, from Sam Raimi. There you go. Uh, what's going on here? They set up the whole multiverse thing and then reset it by the end of the film. Where do we go from here? Thor Love and Thunder is going to be a comedy. And what's with killing all those great cameos in the middle? That was senseless in addition to uh, Shirley's Theron's stunt casting at the end. Why should we care? The entire phase four has been completely completely random movies, Black Widow, Shang-Chi, Eternals, that have nothing to do with setting up anything. No kidding. Uh, they have no set plot in mind. Also true. And my head hurts just thinking about it. All of that's a quote from his cousin Vinny, which made me laugh. I'm thinking, <laughs> my cousin Vinny. Anyway, great film. Anyway, keep going. Apparently, uh, Anthony D. S. Alessandro went on to uh, defend Disney Plus's Secret Invasion, Loki Season 2, and Ant-Man and Wasp Quantumania. I don't know why. Uh, basically saying that that'll build out the multiverse. Nah, not really. It's just consume more content crap. But tell yourself whatever you want. But anyway, and another quote from a different source says, the movie has to be loved and enjoyed enough to want to see it a second time, said Kentucky Delaware exhibition boss Kirk Roman to Deadline this weekend. My moviegoers feel the film is not good enough to see again. And that's a, wow, a continuing pattern with the new direction for Disney, content over quality. So you're going to continue to get more of this garbage that's agenda driven. But what's really funny is, of course, they go on to talk about the competition. Well, the competition this weekend was Firestarter, which was a day and date release on Peacock Plus as well as in theaters, and it flopped hard. It got such a poor reception that I had trouble finding a positive 
article to cover on it. You can take a look at this one real quickly right here. There really wasn't much positive to say about it. Why would you reboot this film? Why would you remake it? That's the only question I have. And you can see the numbers here, um, you know, going into it. The bad guys was, uh, you know, essentially second place. You had Sonic the Hedgehog 2 in third place. And Firestarter, again, an opening film that generated not a whole lot of money. I mean, what? $3.8 million. Nobody's interested in that. And of course, all the other stuff that kept on going throughout their regular theatrical runs, which seemed to be about 45 days now. Now, what's interesting is the fall off was amazing because there was really no competition for the film. Again, Bad Guys is in a multi-week run. It's several weeks in. You had Firestarter, which is garbage. Nobody's interested in. And there really wasn't anything else to compete with, but there's something coming up that they'll have to compete with, which is going to make Doctor Strange look silly. Of course, I'm talking about Top Gun, but we'll get there in a minute. There are 39 comments in this article, at least when I pulled it. There's probably more now that we're watching this video, but it's interesting because this, this Doctor Strange sequel is is not for kids and the final box office will be well above 300 million so this is somebody that's like shilling on the side of the, the Disney folks and the film itself which I think is kind of interesting and you know somebody else says it's not even a Wanda WandaVision season finale it's just uh, the emotional arc of the last episode of WandaVision warmed over with worse characterization holy cow absurd absurdly overstuffed dysfunctional script packed with several movies trying to happen at once and I can't disagree with that based on all reporting and clips that I've seen. Kyle says maybe if they actually made a true Doctor Strange 2 film and not a Wanda film as it was deceptively marketed, holy cow, should we be able to sue them for that? I'm just curious. Uh, then word of mouth wouldn't have been as bad. I probably agree with that. Maybe they should have, should have just called it uh, the Scarlet Witch. Maybe it would have done better then. And then it would have made sense that Doctor Strange was a not even a co-pilot, like sitting third chair in this film. Somebody goes on to say a worse drop than Spider-Man 3, which was one crappy movie in case anyone forgot. Yeah, uh, yeah, because it's a this is from not a shocker. Yeah, because it's a garbage film that should have been called WandaVision 2 Multiverse of Multiverse Boogaloo. That's funny. There's a lot of other great takes in these comments, I have to say. I'm always impressed with what people write, and sometimes I'm laughing at how ignorant they seem to be, or how, well, uninformed people like to keep themselves. Of course, I appreciate all of you here because you guys stay up on everything and it's fun. We get to have great conversations and I, I, I value that more than you could possibly imagine. So another anonymous poster here says, what would they expect? They led audiences to believe that they were going to see the first ever team up with the MCU's two most popular magic heroes, Doctor Strange and the Scarlet Witch. Yeah, actually from the teaser trailers that we saw and some of the other trailer elements that kind of made it look that way, deceptively marketed. Then they see a movie where that doesn't happen and both Strange and Wanda, for different reasons, are shortchanged by the story. Of course, there are a few other comments in here that are kind of interesting. Somebody says something that I actually agree with 100%. This is from Anonymous, so I can't credit the actual person, but they say, with lackluster word of mouth and a big second weekend drop, and with Top Gun eventually sh uh, sucking up all the premium screens, which is going to happen in a couple of weeks, I'm actually not sure if this will reach a billion. I don't think it's gonna. 800, and yes, maybe if all else holds, 900. Well, it's reasonable. By post-COVID bad Hollywood era, it holds up, okay. But I guarantee Marvel was disappointed with this one, and I agree with that entirely. Chris calls out specifically that uh, Saturday update is hilarious. It will have a horrendous second weekend drop, but followed by excuses. And if you read the article, you'll see that. Of course, everybody's mentioned, including me, that Top Gun's going to be coming out here shortly. You're going to be able to see that starting, I believe, May 24th. And you know what? I think it's going to be a huge film. Reviews are coming in uh, from both sides, you know, both critics and, of course, you know, normal audience members alike. Uh, and they're raving about the film, which is an unusual situation. So hopefully, hopefully it'll be great. And I'm looking forward to it. But let's wrap this up and give it a complete summary for what this Dr. Strange 2 mom thing is actually. It's actually the culmination of something that Disney and these other studios have created for themselves. A model that will continue to drive down theatrical revenues where they earn the most 
money. Seriously. Going to a film generates a ton of revenue. It generates buzz around the films. It's kind of the, the second part of the trailer. It's the audience word of mouth. And if something's bad, it's going to be, well, exposed, which of course this film has been. And two, this thing only has a 45 day theatrical window. And that's the real problem because everybody knows after the people that had to see it because of FOMO or avoiding spoilers has already seen it for the most part, hence the fall off. They know that in 45 days, they're gonna be able to cruise on over to Disney Plus and catch this over there, which means for the bargain price of whatever they pay for Disney Plus, cause who knows what that range is nowadays, they're going to get an opportunity to see a first run film, which uh, could have been a box office receipt. This was a stupid way of going about things, Disney and any other studio that's listening, which is why I think with Top Gun, it's going to be successful because it's not streaming. There's an article on CNET that talks about that specifically. So there's two factors in play, one bad word of mouth, and two, the people that have a minor interest in this film aren't compelled to see it in a theater, so I don't think this thing will rack up $900 million. It might make $800 million. I'm still not convinced. I think it's going to have a terrific fall off next week. I think it's done the bulk of its earnings. What do you think? Use the comment section down below and let me know. Let's have a discussion about this. I'm interested in what you think. And I'm also encouraging you to support other independent creators here on the platform because they really don't get the kind of support that they absolutely deserve because, uh, well, the platforms themselves favor the corporate content creators for the most part. Now, there are a few exceptions like Odyssey and Rumble and some others, but for the most part, they favor the corporate content creators, which are essentially shilltastic. And that's what you're trying to avoid, I think. By the way, thanks for spending a little bit of time with me here today. Be sure to hit the like button, subscribe. You know, if you're not, I would appreciate that. Um, you know, obviously make a comment so we can exchange ideas and of course share my content around. It's a lot of fun, especially the live streams. And with that being said, be sure to take care of yourself, take care of others, wash your hands, of course, because it's good hygiene. And until next time, bye. Hey there, one last quick note before I let you go. And before we make it to the end of this video, I, Culture Casino, have a brand new Teespring store. That's right, you can now go to Teespring, look up Culture Casino, or use the link in the video below, and pick out some handsome and beautiful Culture Casino merchandise with uh, many different designs and styles and colors many different items. I was actually surprised at all of the things that you could create. And I have some more uh, designs and uh, items on the way here shortly. But, you know, if you want to support the channel in that way, there is some merch. Otherwise, here comes the ending. Thanks for visiting today. Be sure you're subscribed and hit that for alerts. Yay! Of course, like and share all of the videos that you can as it helps with the algorithm. Have a great day.